50 years since a group of knockabout Aussies played a vital role in man's first mission to the moon, the dish right here in Parks is more important than ever, still looking to the sky and giving us a greater understanding of space. 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 600 10, million people 9, around the world watched man step foot onto the moon. But the footage relied on the work of a dedicated team at the CSIRO Parks Observatory. Surviving staff members David Cook and Ben Lamb remember it like it was yesterday. I saw the picture of, uh, of Armstrong coming down the ladder, putting his foot on the moon on a little, little green uh, screen. And uh, then after when it was all over and we'd finished the pass, I went down outside and looked up and caught the moon was still there, of course. And I was quite amazed to think, well, uh, there's a man up there, there's some several men up there, and uh, we're, we're a bit apart in uh, helping them to get one there. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. To be one of the drivers, uh, you knew how hard it was to, to keep the telescope facing that far out that you were sure, you know, you weren't missing it sort of thing. So you had to make sure, you know, you had to be on the, on the ball right through the whole night to make sure that the telescope was facing the right, right way. Half a century later, the DISH is regarded as one of the best radio telescopes anywhere in the world, keeping Australia at the forefront of radio astronomy. But Parkes is still primarily a research instrument, so every day, every night, we're actually doing research or astrophysical searches for various types of stars, or we're kind of surveying the galaxy or looking at galaxies far, far away. And that's always been why Parks was built and that's still what Parks does 50, even 60 years later. If you were to tell somebody 50, 60 years ago how much data or how much of the sky Parks would be able to see now, no one would believe it. But the reason we can is because of the advances in things like GPUs and the ability to now send data over fiber or glass rather than having to send it down copper cables. And those things have played a pivotal, um, a pivotal role in determining the future of parks, because if we couldn't, we wouldn't still be here. And the, the future of radio astronomy in Australia is incredibly bright. I, I would actually argue that Australia is really um, one of the main contenders driving the entire field. Parks operation scientist John Sarkison says the dish has a very big future. It's a great instrument. It was recognised very early on to be a near ideal instrument for tracking spacecraft. And um, The most recent example was we um, just a few months ago we tracked Voyager 2 as it crossed the heliopause and moved into interstellar space. Um, and, um, and that was something fantastic because um, 40, 42 years ago Voyager 2 was launched. And so here, 42 years later, I couldn't believe it. You know, we're actually tracking the spacecraft after all those decades as it was entering interstellar space. So it was really um, a, a great, great moment.